It's my absolute pleasure uh, to be joined by a gentleman who um, I feel like I know. I've been watching his content for the last five or six years uh, ad nauseum on YouTube, um, Ian Fortune. Ian, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Jason. Good to be with you. Mate, um, we've got you on to speak about uh, this year's Irish Derby series. And um, before we get into last night's action, just an observation about the series. I'm quite taken by um, the amount of quick times that we've seen during this series. Um, just got it down a quick stat. Um, up until last night, 40 greyhounds had gone under 29.30 there and 21 of those have occurred in this series. Um, what are we putting that down to? Are they preparing the track differently? You've got an unusually hot summer. Um, what's the explanation for the really, really fast times that we're seeing? I would say both. Uh, both are very much contributing factors. It's been a, an unusually warm sort of summer for us here in Ireland, allied with plenty of rain. And you know yourself, heat and water uh, make for a fast track. Also, the track was slightly realigned um, about a year and a year and a half back. And they just um, basically one or two dogs were propping up at the third bend and, you know, the, the opening bends, uh, the odd bit of trouble. But no, once they've realigned the track, just dogs seem to be more fluent. And again, you know, that allows for that length or two lengths perhaps um, faster. And as a result, they, they are going faster. But there's no question the track has been prepared wonderfully well this year. And I would have thought in the main it would be a, what has been a good series for the punters. Um, most of the favourites have been getting through. Um, New in Taylor went 29-13 in the first of them. Um, and he went... 332 to the first mark. He went 344 when Pastana beat him last time. It does seem as though throughout the series he's starting to trap better. Yeah, no question. He only had his first race over 550 yards in the opening round of the derby. He'd been a dog where we'd been wondering whether he was going to be a short runner over the trip because um, in all his previous 12 races, and he had been unbeaten coming into the derby, he had looked a dog that, well, 525 looked like the, the to really stretch his stamina. But he's improved throughout the derby. There's no question he's a strengthening young greyhound. And again, once he got used to the 550-yard boxes, you've seen a, a natural progression. His trapping has got better and better. But last night, it was almost as if he catapulted from them. It was like someone kicked him up the backside as the hair came up behind the boxes. Um, yeah, it was over after a stride. What he did around the opening bend and the second bend in particular, he took two and a half lengths in a matter of strides off Bally Mac Cooper, who's one of our fastest in second. It was stunning to watch. The 29-13 last night was perhaps the best run of the entire derby because conditions last night weren't as fast. There was a very strong headwind up the home straight and, you know... It, it was almost, I was left almost scratching my head. Now, the wind was dropping at points, but what he did last night was, was truly sensational. Um, the other dog that we've seen be almost faultless at box rides throughout the series has been Pastana. Um, last night, he failed to break three, uh, 340 to the first mark for the first time in quite a while, and his run home time was, wasn't quite um, what it has been in previous rounds. Do you think maybe those quick runs from earlier on in the series are starting to catch up with him a little bit? Um, if he'd been on his own last night, I'd have said yes. But the fact that the second dog, Bally McWild, who did 29-7 in the previous round, joined fastest with Pastana in the quarterfinals, he got a solo last night in defeat behind Pastana. He wasn't doing the clock either. And this is a real strong running greyhound. He's not one you'd expect to be going back through the derby. I just have a feeling that the conditions were much worse those 15 minutes after New Inn Taylor because to the eye, Pastana did very little wrong. Okay, the 340 is a, a few spots behind what he had done in the previous rounds. But... That could be put down to perhaps just his second stride. He didn't quite get racing as quickly as, as he has done, but to the eye, it was still very, very impressive. He, he left really good greyhounds standing to the third bend. So I'm putting it more down to track conditions at that point rather than actually the dog coming back. And I think you'll see a very different greyhound in the final. When I say it's a very different greyhound, I think you'll see the exact same greyhound in terms of his racing style. But I think he'll go considerably faster if, if conditions allow. Um, the other two greyhounds of note in the final, the um, the two Ballymac dogs, Ballymac Wild and Ballymac Cooper. I mean, in any normal year, um, they would be the topic of conversation. Uh, what chance do you give them in the final of being able to reverse the results with New Inn, Taylor and Pistana? Normally, you go into a derby final and use the same line over and over again. It's always because you never know how the dogs will react to the crowd. You know, Shelburne Park on a derby final night is absolutely hectic. It's bursting at the seams. There is no standing room. There's no room to watch anything. It's just, it's bananas, basically. This year, it's like dogs going in for a trial on a Monday morning. It's going to be eerily quiet. There's going to be nobody there. Listen, we're waiting on the government to give us um, a heads up on that. 
that announcement will be made Tuesday, but it looks like there'll be very, very few people on the stands, if not like a handful. Um, and those will be the people that are involved in Greyhounds on the night. Um, it's very hard to see the two favourites missing the kick, but Liam Dowling has been there before. He's won a derby in 2015 with Bally Mac Matt. It's worth noting that Pastana would have grown up alongside the two Bally Mac runners mm-hmm. because he is bred by Liam Dowling also. Um, Bally Mac Wild is very strong. Um, he's just not quite sharp enough for the likes of Pastana and New and Taylor in the early years. Um, Bally Mac Cooper, to even get him here, was quite an achievement. He had a, a near career threatening injury um, at the back end of last year. He won the Night of Stars last November and soon after that picked up a, a serious injury. It looked like this was going to be his year, but no, he's done well to even come back. And I would imagine that Liam is just happy with that. If he does happen to win a derby with either of these dogs, well, he'll be more than happy, but have no doubt that Bally Mac Wild is certainly a greyhound for next year, while any anything that Bally Mac Cooper achieves is a bonus. We know the box draw, of course, already. New in Taylor being the wide seed gets his preferred draw, box six. But Passan has got the four, Ian, and we know he's, he's a mad crasher. All he wants to do is get straight left after the jump. Um, is that the big negative for him in the final? Normally, you'd say yes, but there is a, a distinct lack of, as you say, a, a jumper on the inside. Nothing that's going to fly out. I think Pasano will get to the rail. It's the fact that he's going to use up that, perhaps that length of energy getting to the fence. Whereas if he was on the fence, he just has to concentrate and get into the corner as quickly as possible. He's going to concentrate and get into the rail first and then getting into the corner. That could be the difference, but... He does have the inside line on you in Taylor. And if you actually watch you in last night, you know what he did off the second bend, he cut the second bend like a, an inside runner. So it'll just be interesting now if Pastana does go crash, hits the hits the lids and is on the inside of New and Taylor, and then it's race on. And I know I can't wait for that. I think Pastana is the dog to beat because he'll have the inside line on you in Taylor. But after last night, I wouldn't be surprised by anything you in Taylor does because it was perhaps one of the most near perfect racing displays I've ever seen from a greyhound. Seems funny to suggest that I'm going to go against them, but it's worth remembering Pastana is the only greyhound in Irish history to ever break 29 seconds for 550 yards. And by all accounts, Owen McKenna knows exactly what it takes to win a derby. He's won one himself. And of course, his father, Jerry McKenna, is the number one legend of Irish greyhound racing history. So, you know, he's been there, done that. Uh, it's noted that five of the six derby dogs in the final um, their connections of a one a derby. The exception is Mina Miracle, who is the sole bitch in the lineup. And uh, what a what a what a story that is, even to get to the final for the for the cores up in the north. But um, no, I think Pastana will remain the one to beat. Although I wouldn't be surprised if New and Taylor did blitz the lids and lead all. Excellent stuff. Some wonderful insight there from Ian Fortune. We thank him for giving up his time. Commentator, journalist and broadcaster on all things Irish greyhounds, as well as Dawn Quinn. Now, from the Irish Greyhound Board, a big thank you for allowing us to use the vision we saw there. Jason Lincoln, a couple of things. Firstly, you look like a kid on Christmas morning uh, talking to Ian. Secondly, that backdrop, you need to take some tips from Ian and sort yourself out a backdrop. I know you're at a hotel, but it's no excuse. And, uh, gee, sounds a bit like you as well, saying, oh, I really like Pastana, should be hard to beat, but I'm tipping against it. I don't know where to start there. So, yeah, look, I mean, I, I didn't have much... Um, I didn't really have much input into the backdrop, Mark. It was either the bed or, you know, whatever else was in the hotel room. And I thought that was the best angle that I possibly had. Possibly with me out of the shot would have even been better. But, um, yeah, look, you touched on, um, you know, look, getting to have a chat to Ian was, was fantastic, as I touched on um, in the interview. Um, I spent a lot of time on YouTube, um, you know, traipsing through old greyhound replays and old horse replays, Mark. But, um, look, if you are interested in, in Irish greyhound racing and you're interested in watching their feature races, jump onto YouTube. Um, it's the Irish Greyhound Racing Board website. And they basically put up good packages face, you know, for all of their feature races. Um, the Derby, they've covered pretty much every heat with um, with really good feedback from both Ian and, um, and Kevin Hennessy as well, who's um, um, the son of a very famous... Greyhound trainer there in Paul Hennessy. So yeah, look, it was it was fabulous to catch up with Ian. He's a wealth of knowledge, as you can imagine. His father, Michael, um, is is one of the absolute greats there in uh, in Irish greyhound racing. Just very quickly on the dogs that are in the final. Um, ha- was having a chat with um, Harry Finlay um, only last week, actually post the semi-finals, and Harry's one of the better known punters anywhere in the world, as you'd well know. Um, he has. He has said to me that he thinks Pastana is probably the best beginner he's ever seen, and um, this is a bloke who's been around the traps a few times. 
Nice name drop there, Jason Lincoln. Of course, as well, we must thank uh, Sarah Kinsler as well for getting in touch. She also has some fantastic content heading towards the final of the Irish Derby now.